What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Sister Girl on Films. And as you can tell by the title, I will be giving my thoughts and views and opinions on Coming to America, which is the sequel to the 1988 classic, Coming to America. Hey, sister girl on films, you don't want to miss a thing, better stay tuned in. Uh, so lay back, get into the vibe, in the mood, real reviews from a sister's point of view. Trailer reactions, movies and TV, so entertaining and authentic, believe me. So roll that footage, I'm ready to chill. Time to hang out with my sister girl. Hey, sister girl on films. Hey, sister girl on films. Hey. So... <laughs> This sequel has been years in the making, 30 some odd years in the making. And if I'm not mistaken, I do believe at one point, uh, Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall did not want to do this sequel. They were definitely like not for it at all. And which is why it took so long uh, for, uh, for it to be made. And one thing I did notice was that it did bring back um, the original writers of the first Coming to America, but then they also added Kenya Burris to the writing team, um, which I'll talk about briefly a little bit later, uh, why maybe I wasn't a necessarily a fan of that decision. But just like in the original, we have Prince Hakeem, who was played by Eddie Murphy, and his courtier, is that a, is that a thing? I don't know shit. His something, child. His best friend, Sammy. Uh, we, we find them back in Zamunda. They are doing well. Prince Hakeem is married to Lisa still, beautiful Lisa McDowell. Three beautiful daughters, honey. They are gorgeous. I love them. And they are still living in a beautiful palace in Zamunda. And there are some changes that are getting ready to happen in the royal family. And one thing that is a barrier for Hakeem and his family moving forward is that he does not have a male heir to the throne. If anything should happen to him there is a risk that maybe the kingdom of Zamunda will be taken over by the ruthless General Izzy, played by Wesley Snipes. And General Izzy is the ruler or the king of Nextoria. Yes, Nextoria. So Hakeem finds out that he has a son in New York and he goes to New York, finds his son, brings him back to Zamunda and boom, bam, pow! We got ourselves a sequel. <laughs> Let me go ahead and just get into what I liked about this film first and foremost, because I feel like I can just breeze through that real quick. It'll be fast, I promise, okay? So what I really enjoyed about coming to America is first of all, I appreciated a little bit that they attempted to do something new in terms of like costume design, um, Mika, Princess Mika, who is uh, Hakeem's oldest daughter. I thought it was so cute that um, a lot of her outfits had like the Puma logo on it. And I was like, okay, makes sense. You know, kids now in the 21st century would have brand name, everything, designer, everything. So I appreciated that. And overall, just the wardrobe being, just the costume design was gorgeous in this film like every scene I was just taken aback by how beautiful something was that somebody had on um and I just really loved how much attention to detail was put into that even to the accessories in the face the hairstyles just everything like visually the movie is gorgeous to look at I also really enjoyed the performances from all the women um, not to say the men didn't do well, but the women really stood out to me and it wasn't on some like, oh, feminist women empowerment type thing. I just thought they did a really good job. Um, Sheree Headley, I think I'm saying her first name right. Sheree, Shari, Sheree, Sheree sounds Girl, right. Girl, it's Sheree. Sheree. Get it together. Who plays, uh, Lisa. I loved how they helped her character develop from the first one to this one. The first one. She had a voice um, and she was, you can tell she was a strong woman, but her character was just, again, she was just a love interest. But now that she has her prince and now she's the princess about to be the queen, um, she got a little spunk to her. Would you dare banish me from my own bedroom? 
And a few of the scenes that she was in actually to me were some of the funniest scenes in the movie. Um, they were few and far in between. But the ones that she was actually in in like center stage, I probably got my best laughs from. So I really loved her in this. Kiki Lane, who played Princess Mika, did an amazing job. And she is gorgeous, honey. Beautiful. I loved everything about her. I really wish that the movie had just scrapped this whole idea of Hakeem needing a, um, a male heir and trying to find this long lost son and had really actually been about Princess Mika and about her journey and maybe her going to New York and trying to find herself or her being over the fact that she lives in a very misogynistic society where women can't go beyond whatever men say and she decided to go out into the world and kind of make her own path like her father. That would have been dope. Y'all got a whole idea about how this movie could have been better. Another video for another day, okay? I also liked, and I'm hopefully I don't mess up her name, Namzamo Mbata. I feel like I'm butchering her name and I'm so sorry because I freaking loved her. She played Marimbe in this, another gorgeous black woman. And I loved her. Every time she was on screen, again, she had all of my focus, all of my attention, not only because she's so beautiful, but I felt like she did such a good freaking job. I loved her. And then, believe it or not, Leslie Jones. Hey, Quay. I'm sorry I slept with your man. A lot of people were nervous about her being in this film. They were afraid that she would be too over the top, too loud, too this, too that. And while there were moments when she was a bit over the top and I'm like, dang, they could have reeled her in just a little bit. Overall, I loved Leslie Jones in this. I loved how motherly her character was. She played Mary Johnson, not Johnson, Johnson. Um, I loved how motherly she was. I loved um, some of the moments when she said little slick comments here and there. Um, I heard that a lot of her lines were ad-libbed um, because the director just kind of just let her go and do her thing. Um, and there were some really funny moments with Leslie Jones in this film. So I really loved her. And I thought there were times when she was honey slaying it. She looked beautiful. Um, she looks like she put a little weight on and I love it on her. I really do. Okay, go ahead, Leslie. So those were the things I really loved about this film. Now, what I did not like about this movie. Oh, shit. Now, Here we go. I'm not going to join a hate train and be like, this movie was trash. Because um, the first time I watched it, I had to watch it twice. The first time I watched it, I definitely thought it was trash. Hot trash juice. Dumpster fire. All of that. But then I said, nah, let me watch it one more time. Make sure I didn't miss nothing. Um, let me go in with a fresh set of eyes, a fresh opinion, better attitude, girl. Fix yourself. Give it a chance. So I went in a second time and rewatched it. And then there were a couple of parts in there that I missed. I don't know how I missed the first time. Girl, it just you didn't was bored as hell. That's how you missed time, the first honestly. time. I kept getting up and going to do something else. But I sat down and actually watched it the second time. There were a couple of things that maybe got a little chuckle out of me. Um, but for the most part, the same things I liked about it the first time I saw it were the same things I liked about it the second time. And the things that I didn't like about it, I just did not like about it. Um, one thing that I did not like about this film was how it did this thing where, yes, we want to reference the first one, but I hate when sequels take like the notable lines and, and moments and quotes from the first film and put it into the second one. That gets on my nerves. And I find it funny that people are like calling it nostalgia in this context. But when they did it in Next Friday, people hated it. So I don't get what the difference is. Another thing I really did not like about this film were um, General Izzy's henchmen or like soldiers. I fucking hated every time he walked into the room and they had to do a whole step routine. Like I didn't get it. I didn't get why that was necessary. 
I didn't understand if was it supposed to be like a spoof or a parody of something like he needed a grand entrance every time he walked into a room because he really wasn't as great. I don't know. The fact that I have to sit down and break that down and try to process why it needed to be funny lets me know that it wasn't funny. I hated it every freaking time. And then there's this scene. OK, one minor spoiler. Not really, but kind of. So there is this scene where uh, General Izzy's daughter is introduced to Prince Hakim's new son. And they do a musical number. And I don't know why. Uh, why? Uh, why did this have to happen? Why? All the unnecessary celebrity cameos. Like people were hyped like, oh, Rick Ross was in there. Rick Ross didn't need to be in this. He didn't. I'm sure there were plenty of black actors in LA or Atlanta, wherever this was filmed, that would have loved the opportunity to be in this movie. Why do we need Rick Ross? Is he breaking into film? Like, come on, come on, let's not. <sighs> Another thing, it's not necessarily what I didn't like about it, but I was so disappointed in Wesley Snipes' performance. And I know y'all gonna, y'all, I'm probably gonna get a thumbs down right now in the video. But look, hear me out. <laughs> now that is one part of the film where probably my expectations were higher than they should have been. And I have seen him be funny before and I do enjoy him, but there were just some mannerisms and things that they allowed him to do um, with his character that just weren't funny to me. You would love nothing more than to take over Zamunda. What is it? And I feel like it was trying a little too hard. And I've seen people talk about how much they loved his performance and how he was the best thing in the film for them. And I respect it. You know, if you liked what he had to give, then, you know, I ain't mad at it. But as for me, um, I just I just wasn't that impressed with his performance. And I hate to say it. I would love to see him in another comedy. But for me, this just wasn't it. I also <laughs> I also felt like remember earlier i said i was gonna bring him this old kenya burris thing i'm bringing it back so it to me it felt very obvious that there were two different train of thoughts that were happening here and they kind of just crashed in the middle and created this film like the tone there was like a tone shift every now and now and again i feel like i'm really watching two different movies but all at the same time and it was too much i wasn't feeling it it didn't feel like a cohesive voice for this film and i'm gonna go back to this whole idea of it felt like a spoof versus a comedy and i know the original one was kind of a parody kind of a spoof but not as hard hitting but now this one really kind of reminded me of like naked gun or like um airplane y'all i get it people were excited for this film people love i love eddie murphy like eddie murphy is my favorite comedian like to me he is the goat period no other one i love him to death but I'm sorry. I felt like Girl, we ain't sorry. We more, just this like was it not shit. as much of a sequel in introducing us to something new, even though a lot of the newer actors were pushed to the forefront more so than the vets. But it didn't feel like something new. I feel like if I had never seen the first one and this was my introduction to the coming to America film. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. I I wouldn't go back and watch the first one. And not because this one just filled me up so much, but because I'm like, well, shit, if this was the, the sequel, then I don't want to watch the first one. That's how I would have looked at it. And my expectations in watching this, before I watched it, they weren't super high. Like, they were pretty fucking low. I'm gonna be honest. They were pretty low, okay? I was like, I don't expect it to, to be that good. I said I was gonna be cautiously optimistic, try to be positive about it if you saw my trailer reaction. But in the back of my mind, I knew it was probably not gonna be that good. But I didn't expect it to be this not good for me. So, I'm not gonna say don't watch this film, because absolutely, if you feel like you wanna see this film, um, 
it's it's streaming on Amazon. So if you have Amazon Prime, you're not paying anything to see it. It's free with your membership. You know, you're not going to the movies to see it. Check it out. Then, you know, go ahead and watch it. You know, <sighs> for me, it's not, I, I'm not going to rewatch it. I'm just not. There were a couple of scenes that were funny, but not funny enough for me to go back for a second viewing. And I do want to say, I did like the cameos from the, the, um, I don't even know what you want to call it, but the additional characters from the first one. So like, uh, the Reverend, um, the barbers from the, um, mighty, is it mighty tea shop? Is it my, my tea sharp or my tea shop? I gotta look that up because as somebody who claims to love the first one, this has perplexed me and I never really pay attention to the sign. I'm rambling. Anyway, I love them. I loved Randy Watson. That scene, and again, whatever we know, these people are showing up. But when he shows up, I was in tears, laughing. Um, and Lunell was funny too. I didn't forget to mention her. But yeah, so I would say, you know, if you're just curious, go ahead and check it out. But, you know, it it's not a rewatch for me. So let me know in the comments below if you watched this movie and what you thought about it. If you loved it, you know, what were your favorite parts? If you were not a fan, what would you have liked to see different? And that's all I got, y'all. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to see y'all next time for something else. Thank you so much for your support. And I'm going to see y'all next time. Holla. Sister girl, I don't feel so